So yeah, you can see in the monitor that is built into my device, you can see the blood vessel morphology of the embryo, which is like very important for a lot of the applications which I researched. Yeah. And how long have you been re researching this topic for? So I've been researching just eggs in general since the summer of my sophomore year. And uh, my project's actually a continuation project. I, I began research, I took the prerequisite with Mr. Nadarcy, his MRL exploration elective uh, on try three of my freshman year. And uh, that, I had a lot of different ideas and one of them happened to be eggs, since that's like one of my passions, which I could go into later as well. And uh, I essentially just researched how can we modify eggs in order to, in order to really change the way people use uh, different model systems in research. So for example, you can, you can use a uh, developing egg embryo as a platform for cancer research. So these embryos have a membrane called the chorioallantoic membrane, and within that membrane is a lot of blood vessels and nutrients that allow the transference of, say, a human cancer cell line that you're developing in a petri dish. You can actually transfer them onto that membrane and then watch tumor, tumors form and metastasize and grow. And that's actually a very important aspect that cancer biologists like need to look into when they're assessing if a treatment works or not. And what inspired you to research this topic specifically? Yeah, so when I was 10 years old, I, I, I got the chance to actually raise and incubate quails. So they're, they're another type of like domestic bird. And that really like opened the, like my eyes to like, oh, you can actually like raise an animal from like start to finish and like have your like hands on like an, like an entire living being, which is, like a very surreal experience at first, but like this year I must have incubated like 120, 150 eggs, all of them with like developing embryos inside them. So it was just the the ability to like have a hand in nature is something that like is very interesting to me and fascinates me. And were there any challenges that you encountered during your research process? And if so, how could you overcome them? Oh yeah, there were plenty. So uh, as a, I'm in AMST, so I really have no like, inherent engineering skills. So the fact that I was doing mechatronics research, I had to pick up like a lot of different uh, skills, like uh, learning how to use CAD and 3D printing, coding, like a, a whole bunch of things. So early on, like that was my problem. Like that was like my main limitation. Like I can't engineer as well as other students, but like I was very driven and I was able to learn and pick it up. And Mr. Nadarcy is a very helpful research mentor. So. Uh, that that was probably the way I would say it to like another student if they want to overcome like the that skill barrier that is there for any real research is that you just have to like start learning as fast as possible. Yeah. And finally, is there any advice that you want to give to people who may be interested in starting research? Yeah. So yeah, as I said earlier, just like start as soon as possible. BCA, like we're so fortunate at BCA to have so many different possible avenues you could go down in order to do research. You could do chem research, bio research, mechatronics research, like, and social science research is a new research that just started this year. So there are a lot of different avenues that you could explore and really just choose something that you're passionate about, not something that you're just gonna like sit in class and not really work on, but something that you'd work on out of school and in between school and in between classes, something that like really fascinates you, yeah. Well, thank you so much for this interview, Mohammed. We wish you the best of luck at Regeneron. Thank you. Tomorrow at 7 p.m. is Cabaret, which is run by the Junior Class Council. The show will feature a collection of songs and dances from BCA students. Additionally, Mr. Davis will also be putting on a special performance of his own. Tickets can be purchased through Community Pass, during lunch periods, or at the door. Joining us on campus this week are students from Kokukaji High School in Hiroshima, Japan. Kokutaiji High School is a BCA sister school, and we have been invited to participate in their research convention. At this convention, students will present their research and receive valuable feedback from experts, guests, and peers. Last Thursday was Akaha's annual chocolate competition. Culinary seniors and juniors worked in pairs to create multi-tiered cakes, with the main ingredient being chocolate. Please welcome to the show Olivia Lee and Annika Ha, this year's chocolate competition grand prize winners. Hi Annika and Olivia, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, thank you 
for having yeah, us. Yeah, thank you. So you and your entire academy worked tirelessly to make this event a success and impress the judges. So let's watch a clip from the event. Wow, it looks great. Can you guys tell us a little bit about your cake? Yeah, so um, our cake design, our cake theme was um, Aladdin, based on the Disney movie. Um, and so I guess I'll go down, I'll do a rundown of our cake. So our first tier was just the Arabian Night, um, and we put a, a panther for the cave that um, the magic lamp is in. And then the second tier, we have the town scene where Aladdin is from and where he first meets Jasmine. And then the top tier, we have the palace where Jasmine lives and the balcony um, where Aladdin brings his magic carpet. And yeah. Um, and then for our flavors, we actually picked banana since I th um, the name banana comes from Arabic. So we did a chocolate cake layer for our tasting cakes with a vanilla diplomat cream some vanilla homemade vanilla wafers with fresh bananas and then we just repeated that process and then topped it off with a golden lamp cookie. So what inspired you guys to specifically make this cake a lagon themed? So we wanted to pick something that everyone could really recognize on first glance and a lot of people did with our cake and we think that Disney's a perfect fit for that so we kind of just reached a cons consensus on our favorite movie which happened to be Aladdin and also had a lot of fun colors which we loved. Yeah. And um, how long did this entire process take to construct this cake? Um, I would say like three months. So right after Christmas break, Chef T um, put us on a project uh, for modeling chocolate. So we just have to make, had to make a modeling chocolate um, structure. Um, and he, so he taught us how to make it and just work with it. And then, um, then we started our planning. So we started uh, choosing our theme, which was Aladdin, and then choosing our flavor, which is banana, and just creating a binder, which we would present at Chocolate Comp um, with like costing as well as like this is the design and like the actual like picture of our cake. Um, and then from then on, we just created the whole structure from tier to tier um, with the fondant decorations and that's all. And during this process, were there any issues that you guys faced? And if so, how did you solve them? Well, I think the greatest part that we, like, the greatest challenge that we faced was definitely the amount of detail and focus that our cake required. Like Olivia said, for the marketplace tier, we had to make a lot of small items out of fondant, such as little apples, baskets, fruits, etc. And we also, since everything has to be edible for chocolate comp, we had to make our figurines of Aladdin and Jasmine out of fondant, which was a lot trickier than we anticipated. <laughs> so just overall, everything that we had to make for this cake to come together, it wasn't just one design per tier, it was multiple little things, was the hardest part. Yeah, and there's also just a lot of stress during chocolate comp. 
and like you're in the kitchen all the time and usually there's like 30, 40 people in the kitchen so it can be very stressful. But I think me and Annika pretty much did it well. So yeah. we work we work well together. Yeah. We definitely did a, we had a lot of communication I think which definitely. prevented any arguments or mis like issues that might have arisen. Yeah. And is there any advice that you guys may have for any sophomores that are going to be competing in chocolate competition next year? Well, our first piece of advice would be to have an organized schedule. We did have a pretty organized schedule, but we were falling behind since we didn't follow it as strictly as we could. And we definitely think to um, that you should have a lot of trust in your partner. Yes, definitely. Uh, yeah, trust is really important because a lot of the time you're working separately. So I think just trusting your partner to do um, their part well and then trusting yourself to do well as well. Well, thank you both for joining us, and once again, congratulations you. on your award. Thank, thank you. you. We previously experienced some technical difficulties, so we're going to backtrack to some previous announcements. Tomorrow at 7 p.m. is Cabaret, which is run by the Junior Class Council. The show will feature a collection of songs and dances from BCA students. Additionally, Mr. Davis will also be putting on a special performance of his own. Tickets can be purchased through Community Pass during the lunch periods or at the door. Joining us on campus this week are students from Kokutaiji High School in Hiroshima, Japan. Kokutaiji High School is BCA's sister school, and we have been invited to participate in their research convention. At this convention, students will present their research and receive valuable feedback from experts, guests, and peers. Thank you so much for joining us on this week's installment of Night Vision. This has been your go-to television show for BCA News, highlights, and more. I'm Jack. And I'm Samantha. As our last Friday before spring break, we wish all of our viewers are have a relaxing and enjoyable break. Until next time.